Welcome back guys, today we are looking at episode 4 to 8, season 2 of Ben 10 Alien Force. As usual, if you want more Ben 10 content, you got to support me by leaving a like rating on my video as well as subscribing to my channel. Feel free to also click on the notification bell to get notified when I drop my next video. Now without further ado, let's get on with the video. The title of the episode, Save the Last Dance, is an allusion to the 2001 movie of the same name. After Ben discovers the Big Chill transformation is taking control of him, he confides in his girlfriend Julie about one of his older aliens, Ghost Freak, as well as the events that transpired in the original series episode, Ghost Freaked Out, in which the alien tried to take control of Ben. When Big Chill is attacked by the police, they use laser guns instead of normal ones to try and shoot him. This is because bullets weren't allowed to be shown in the Alien Force series. As the gang tries to find Ben as he has once again been taken over by Big Chill, Kevin tracks his location to a mile west of Register Road and north of Wigzio Avenue. Both these names are references to series producers Sam Register and Tram Wigzio. At the end of the episode when Kevin explains that Ben is in fact the father, he also reveals Big Chill's race to be known as the Necrophrygians for the first time. This episode begins with Kevin trying to operate a teleporter pod, likely the same pod that malfunctioned back in episode 2 of this same season, after it was hit with a rock. Now these hybrid teleporter pods are actually based on the same concept Professor Paradox used for his time machine, I mean the two devices even look visually similar to one another. Obviously Paradox's machine is a lot more advanced given that it can also bend time as well as space. And I just want to say that I think it's pretty cool how two different races who live galaxies apart came up with a similar method for manipulating space. But before Kevin actually uses this device to teleport a banana, Ben expresses concern that should a fly land on said banana as it teleports it would create a deadly banana fly monster. In this, the writers are referencing the 1986 sci-fi horror film, The Fly where something similar actually does happen and a man and a fly are teleported together fusing the both of them into a hybrid man-fly abomination thing. After this, Ben's concern is addressed by Kevin just casually reminding Ben that he actually used to turn into an insect all the time, which is obviously a reference to Stingfly, one of Ben's classic aliens. Unsurprisingly, well, unsurprisingly to everyone but Kevin, his little experiment goes wrong and the pod is damaged and in need of repairs. This leads to the reintroduction of Koopa Daniels, a technopath that was introduced in the last season of the original series and who becomes a recurring character in the classic continuity. The recurring characters Joseph Chadwick and Sam Morton make their first appearance in this episode. According to the wiki, the character of Joseph Chadwick is actually based on two real-life people, Dr. Joseph McGill, a World War II criminal, and Werner von Braun, a German scientist and weapons technician. Basel's symbiote extrude ship also makes his first reappearance since his season 1 debut and goes on to become a recurring character throughout the classic franchise. As Gwen and Julie go shopping, Ben ditches them to watch a movie called Brain Stealers from Outer Space. This might possibly be a reference to the 1975 Wonder Woman series episode called Mind Stealers from Outer Space. Though this is purely my speculation as there is no official source backing this up. During the climax of this episode, Sam Morton orders the Forever Knights into full retreat, shouting Run away! Run away! which is a reference to the classic film Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And this won't be the last time we see them make this particular easter egg as it becomes sort of like a recurring joke in the series. Ben's dad makes his first appearance since the original series and Ben's mom her first reappearance since season 1 though this time she resembles her original character design as opposed to her redesign. The two parents also discover Ben's alien secret for the second time as in the original show there was actually an episode where they found out about the Omnitrix but that has since been declared non-canon. When Kevin and Gwen continue their investigation into hybrid activities, they are attacked by DN aliens and the way Gwen uses her mana blast to defend herself is very reminiscent of Dragon Ball's signature Kamehameha attack. Later on, as Gwen furthers her investigation solo, she uses a site called Wi-Fi-pedia which is obviously referencing Wikipedia. We finally get a look at the Null Void and its appearance has undergone quite a few changes from the original show's design. 
The flying tentacled wild mod looking monsters which we now know are called No Guardians make a reappearance from the OG show and they aren't the only ones as Doctor Freaking Animal makes an epic comeback to the series still voiced by his original voice actor Dwight. We also get to see Pierce Wheels in the flesh so to speak after only getting recordings of him in the previous season. Also fun fact the character Helen Wheels name is wordplay on the phrase Hell on Wheels and Manny Armstrong's plays on many arms strong. I have no freaking clue how I ever missed that. But getting back on point, after the fight between Pierce and Ben ends with Ben losing, Grandpa Max expresses his disbelief at this outcome, to which Ben confesses that he let Pierce win on purpose. Now I've always taken this to mean Ben was holding back by not using the Omnitrix, but according to Dwayne McDuffie himself, Grandpa Max's surprise was at Ben losing even while in human form, implying he actually believed Ben's fighting skills are good enough to take on Pierce one on one, even without the Omnitrix. Now this honestly isn't too hard to believe as Ben has actually proven himself consistently to be a great fighter. In fact, I even made a video about the top 10 best fighters in the Ben 10 multiverse and Ben actually makes this list. Near the end of this episode when the No Void Freedom Fighters gather to discuss the threat that is Dr. Animal, we see a Wixillian Org Beast, a Vulpomancer and a Havoc Beast present during the discussion. This is a reference to the original series episode Truth where aliens of the same races were shown escaping from the No Void. And that brings my video to an end, if you liked it I ask that you once again don't forget to hit that like button as that greatly helps my channel grow. Sharing these videos on social media to those who you think would love to see it also helps me out a ton and I would really appreciate it. I would also ask that you subscribe to my channel for easier access to Ben 10 videos as well as other quality content. If any of you are anime watchers, I will also be making videos concerning the powers and abilities of various characters from the Fate anime series. But as per usual, I will still keep a steady supply of Ben 10 videos coming, so don't worry about that. I got you. So feel free to hit up the notification bell to get notified when any of these new videos drop. As always, thank you so much for your time you guys, you are the best and I will definitely see you guys later.